Bird Death. This is his, it used to be a turtle. <laughs> Would you like this? Can you sit? Sit. This mother of his car is dead. Come on. Good boy. Ready? Get it. <laughs> he missed it. Hello, my friends. It is December 7th. Of course I gave him the squeaky toy right when I started talking. That was smart. Can I have that? Can I have that? Give, thank you. I'll give it right back. So, today is my oldest son's birthday, so I'm not going to be vlogging much at all, but I thought I would give you an update real quick and do a tea tasting because, you know, Advent teas calendar. Also, this is one of my favorite sweaters, sweatshirts. Romance novels are my therapy by Thugly Barbie. I'm not sponsored by them or I'm not a rep. I just buy it with my own money because I love it. But I also buy Hello Lovely Box with my own money because I love their stuff too. So I'm not going to give you this right now. Anyway, we're going to do the tea first because I just made it. And it is my least favorite tea that possibly ever could have been invented. And it is three fennel. Soothing sweet and wild fennel seeds with fennel leaf. Mm. The licorice smell is potent. I hate it. Oh, God. So I made this really quickly. We're going to just taste it real fast. And then do you want to know what I'm going to chase it with? I have come to the point where I prefer kombucha to the tea I have for the day. <sighs> Samantha, if you're watching this, I hope you are realizing that you have... And Brie. Brie, if you're watching this, I hope you both realize you have become victorious in the kombucha battle. Because I literally drink it every day. Um, no, can't have that, sir. Not yet. And it is not necessarily a delicious drink, but I am not hating it. So I don't know. It's like an, it's like the, when you hate onions when you're a kid, and then you grow up and you're like onions and everything. You know, just me. Okay. No, you can't have this. Okay. Here we go. 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 Yeah, that's just as bad as I imagined it would be. That's one hundred percent just like. Ugh, liquid licorice, and I hate it, and ugh, I only did that for you. I only did that for you. I hope you appreciate the suffering, because that was no... Mm -mm, no, we don't like that. We don't like that at all. Let's see if this will... Is this going to explode? Mm, Kazi is very interested in it. This is not a doggy treat. I wonder if it would make dogs drunk. <laughs> I'm not giving him any. Don't worry. I love that boy very much. Okay. <gasps> Hallelujah, I am saved. I cannot believe I am saying that, but the kombucha is better than that fennel swill. <laughs> so bad. All right, so there we have the drink tasting out of the way. I can enjoy this kombucha now, and we're gonna dump out the tea. It's gone. Please let there not be any more fennel in my flavors. So, quick reading update. I checked in with you guys pretty late last night, but then I did end up reading quite a bit more of this. Mm, I guess by quite a bit, I mean like 50 extra pages. I'm on this much now. Super, super enjoying this book. This is, I've heard everyone say that this is their favorite in the series. I know Dana loves this is her favorite in the series. I know B from B and her books on Twitter. This is her favorite, like she adores Lawrence so much. And I am just absolutely loving this. This is a pure delight to read. The writing is so tight and concise. The plot is fast paced. The tension between these two is insane. It is so off the charts, hot. This is a fantastic read. It is very sexy. It is very just everything I wanted. Like, you know how sometimes like I, I feel like this is the perfect chaser for A Heart of Blood and Ashes, which was so in-depth and and just like heart, uh, uh, like, you know, we've talked extensively about all of my feelings with this, but this is just like, gets you in right away, gets you invested in the characters, get, you want to know what's, like, it's easy to read, it's fast-paced, like, it's just, this is just like a perfect, I feel like this would be an excellent book to get out of a reading slump, too, and also, if you don't like historicals, or if you maybe are newer to historicals, I would say this is fabulous, because this doesn't really have 
any antiquated speech. It's very feminist women power. There's none of that misogyny. Like, Joanna Shoup is a queen. I really dearly love her writing. I would definitely recommend this if you are looking to start with historical that maybe isn't a regency, because this is set in New York, Gilded Age, so it's late 1800s. It's just, it's just so great. So, like, please don't let me down. Like, I really hope it doesn't let me down, because I love this so much so far. So yeah, I'm not working today. I'm taking the day off, because it's my son's birthday. We're going to hang out. He is in our garage gym right now working out um, because he loves to do that too. He's actually a certified personal trainer this year, a nutritionist too, and it's just really, really exciting. So this day is just going to be a celebration of him. My, my oldest baby boy. Mm, I can't even believe it. So let me see. Was there anything? I dog-eared a couple of pages in here. So there's also like a, a madam, like of a, a like a bordello, like a madam who is and like she loves Shakespeare, she quotes Shakespeare, like I mean can you can you even with that type of character? Like I really like her too, like the side characters are super interesting in this and also there's this really very poignant scene that has a lot to do with how people trust women's words and when they say that they've been attacked or not even necessarily attacked but when when women talk about how they've been in a situation where they feel uncomfortable because of something that a man has done and how the tendency can be and how the tendency can be for men in power or really anyone to not believe women when they say that this man made me uncomfortable like there was a really excellent scene in here where Florence was made to feel very uncomfortable, but there wasn't necessarily by a man, an older man in power, a very wealthy man, but there wasn't necessarily anything done that she could accuse him of, you know what I mean? Like, like there was no physical violence, there was no sexual violence committed against her, but it was just this feeling she had where she was deeply uncomfortable and she just ran out, fled, and and pe people don't believe her, you know? And I feel like that is such a just a, I love, I, I know that that's going to come into play later on, and I love how Joanna, Joanna Shoup, if I call her Joanna Lindsay, like, I'm sorry, Joanna Shoup, I love how she t handles topics like that, and that's something that I, in particular, really love about modern historical writers like Joanna Shoup, like, I love how she attacks those issues and puts them in her book, and also, like, Clay, Clayton, the hero, <laughs> I'm so into him. I know Joanna is known for writing what she calls real a-hole characters, and he definitely is, but I also can tell that he's going to be the type of alpha mellow who just kind of is an alpha, but then he's a marshmallow for her. And I am here for that, because let me give you a little secret. That's how my husband is. Okay, so that's all for this update. Loving this book. It's my son's birthday. Hated the tea. Had to chase it with this. What? It did. I'll see you guys later. Hi, hello, how are you? I had to change my sweater because, my sweatshirt, because I had that white one on and I am going to make my son a berry pie for his birthday. He, I always let them choose what they want for their birthday desserts and I even put the option out there now that they're older like we can go get these fancy desserts from like this cookie shop or whatever but he wanted a berry pie so I'm gonna go make that now and I didn't want to get stains on my white sweatshirt because I am a mess so I was changing my sweatshirt and I'm gonna try these scrunchies to pull my hair up from Brie these are from Brie Brie's shop in Loving Words we're gonna try these. Although, after I got them, I kind of thought, like, if my hair is wet, and I wear these, if it's wet at all, it will definitely bleed onto these, which will be sad. But we're gonna try and do a little updo, which is very, you know, difficult. It's not, it's not difficult at all. And the only problem is, like, I have to keep my bangs out, or else they get all crimpy, and then they never work. I don't know if you're interested in this, but you know, always after that quality content. <laughs> Not really. I'm just, I'm just about showing you my life and 
I just thought we would see how these scrunchies actually work. So I literally put my hair on top of my head, pull it halfway through-ish, and then I take this and wrap it around. Very, could you even see that? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, even, I didn't even think to check. And there we have it. It's a two scrunchie. It's a two scrunchie do. They're so cute. I really like these scrunchies. They're adorable, Brie. I love them. I have a, quite a lot of hair, so we'll see how well they hold up. Like, I have long hair, but it's also very thick. Okay, we're gonna go make a pie. I don't know. I'm kind of not wanting to listen to an audiobook, but I'm gonna pick one. I'm gonna pick one and I'm gonna listen to it. When we make the pie. I just had a late lunch and I was watching this video that Jessen just put out about reviewer and author etiquette and it was a fantastic video and she did such a good job and I've always really admired how articulate she is in her reviews and also how like polite she is too but she also never holds back from uh I don't want to say roasting because it's a polite roasting <laughs> roasting a book that she didn't like because she she talks about why she didn't like it so I feel like I feel like this is something I'm trying to get better at is to get that line of you know like I don't ever want to be bashing a book just because I didn't like it and I feel like she handles this really maturely and really well so if you haven't watched this video you gotta go watch it Hello my friends, welcome to another vlog day. It is December 8th. Oh, thank you. Cosmo wants to show you his toy. He likes it very much. Come here, you wanna show them? Come here. Oh, you want me to throw it? He's sitting ready to pounce. He likes me to toss it up in the air and then he catches it. So. It is December 8th. Yesterday was my son's birthday. I got, I didn't get really any reading done because we just kind of hung out and I did read a little bit when he was working out. And then um, we just watched movies all day. We watched The Fellowship of the Ring and it was just so fun. Just had a chill day at home. I made a pie, which um, was good. And I did have some because it was my son's birthday and I didn't make it gluten-free and I am not feeling good today, and I don't know if that's why. Uh, I'm just having 
I, I tell you one thing, like, this is something that I am realizing with chronic illness is that, and we talked about this in the Sick Chick chats on Bree's channel, is that you can be doing everything right and you can suddenly have a flare-up and not know why. And that happened to me on Saturday night and I didn't say anything about it because I don't want to be constantly telling you when I'm not feeling good when I'm daily vlogging, but that was literally one of the worst and most painful flare-ups I have ever had. I could not move. I was crying. I was just laying in bed and honestly, like, I have a very high tolerance for pain, to be quite honest. I, you know, I had natural labor and childbirth. I am a strength athlete and I feel like you have to have a high tolerance for pain in order to progress in <laughs> athletics and that Saturday night just like knocked me out and I had been doing so good like doing all the things that my naturopath doctor had said and all of a sudden I just was like anyway so book update is I did I mean I read some of this I am uh, I'm a halfway through of the Prince of Broadway still completely loving this completely captivated by this world blown away by Florence and what a tough resilient independent woman she is and I just love 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 how she is constantly seeking her own she wants to have her own voice her own choices and do what she says and I feel like one of the reasons I love that in my historicals is because it was just so out of the ordinary for them at the time you know it was so common for them to be told who to marry be told what to do be very restricted in their freedoms and I feel like today we are so accustomed to having so many freedoms while it's still not perfect for women it's just so refreshing to read that in these historicals and see a woman who's like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be told what to do my whole life. So I really love her independence and her desire to break free and do whatever she wants, no matter, and not let a man tell her what to do. And I'm also super into the romance with Clay. Like he is just, wow, is he ever smitten with her and just not admitting it and loving this. I have a feeling, depending on how this ends, I have a feeling this will be a five-star read. I just have a feeling. I love it. I love this series. I love Joanna Shoup so much. Quit, Dargo. Can't have it. No. So that's a reading update. And now I have a spot of tea for y'all today. <laughs> so yesterday, Jessen from Jessen Reads Romance posted a wonderful video all about reviewers and authors etiquette, like do's and don'ts for reviewers and authors. And she talked, I posted a little bit of a clip from that. I'll have her video linked down below because I think it is a must watch. It was so, so good and very informative and just really, really great for how, you know, the boundaries and what we should do and what we should not do. I just loved it so much. So I watched that and then I got thinking, about, you know, she said something about one-star reviews and how she doesn't really leave one-star reviews. And I got thinking about one of the books that I read last year, I've seen it circulating around recently, that was a one-star read for me. And I, I remember being so angry at this book that I left a really nasty review. And so I went back into Goodreads and I edited it down so it wasn't as nasty because I don't want to come across as nasty ever. No matter how much I like a book, no matter how much I feel offended by a book, I don't want to come across nasty in my reviews because that's not what I want to be known as a book reviewer for, you know? I want to be fair and I want to say, you know, explain things in how I feel. So anyway, I it updated my review and when it updated it, it of course sent a notification out to all of my friends and followers on Goodreads and it cross posted to Twitter and my friends on there saw it and I had several of my friends being like, one star? What? I, you know, like Tamika said, I expect a rant review and Brie said, oh, I can't wait for the vlog for this. So this is the information about that, why I gave it a one star review. So this book, was, I will tell you, it is One Day in December by Josie Silver. This is a holiday romance, I guess. It was very hyped and popular last year. And I got it as one of my book of the month books and I was really excited to read it. And let me just tell you that I, I know I talked about, I don't think you should give one DNFs one star reviews. And now I am regretting that because this was a DNF for me and I gave it a one star review. And let me tell you why, because there was a line in this book that I really did not like and it, I found it to be really hurtful and offensive and it felt like a big, huge double standard in the book world. And so 
Let me tell you, I'm going to read you my review real quick. <laughs> It says, I've read a few books. This is my review. I've Hi, Leonido Dago. I've read a few books this year that have some kind of negative commentary about people who regularly go to the gym and are fit. This one, one day in December, said something about, quote, a body that looked like it was sculpted in the gym for two hours a day, which you kind of admire and also can't help feeling complete disdain for. I'm really freaking tired of this attitude. Body shaming for being fit is still body shaming. It doesn't make it okay just because that person isn't overweight. If this line had been the opposite about someone being overweight, there would have been an up uproar. DNF'd after that little tidbit and refused to read anything by this author again. And that really honestly upset me. And I, I'm going to try and keep this clip short because I realize I'm taking forever when I do these blog clips. But I just honestly, like, that was a gut punch to me because I hate that attitude about, like, why would you say that you feel disdain for someone spending two hours in the gym? You don't know that person's story. You don't know why they're at the gym. You don't know what they're fighting. You don't know how they're feeling. And you don't know how that two hours in the gym might be the only thing keeping them from falling apart, you know? And I, I know that there are douchebags in the gym. Trust me, I know. I know that that stereotype is true. I know that there are a lot of men and women like that. I've seen them. I don't like them either, okay? But as someone who has spent a large amount of time, uh, two hours a day, in the gym, when, it, when I could go to the gym, for years and has dedicated my life to being a strength athlete, this comment just killed me. And it just made me so angry. Like, talking about it right now makes me so freaking angry because, you know what? I want there to be body acceptance for all bodies all bodies, okay? I love plus size heroines. I love plus size representation. I don't, I love seeing heroes that are plus size. I don't want everyone that I read about to be like chiseled abs and, you know, like I don't, I don't want to read that. I think all bodies are beautiful. But the thing that bothers me about this is the attitude of someone spending th their time doing that, you know? Because if I, if I, I could tell you like, so I started lifting weights because I used to be a long distance runner. I used to run marathons and all that stuff. And I had a big injury that completely sidelined me from running and I couldn't do it anymore. And one of my physical therapy options was to get into a weightlifting program. So I started doing that and weightlifting has turned, there is a, a lot of backstory that I won't go into right now, but weightlifting turned into a complete passion for me. And the process of seeing what happens to my mind and my body from trying to get stronger instead of trying to run off calories or earn my food be and doing steps to try and burn calories. Like that was transformative to me. It was transformative to me. It was powerful. It meant so much to me personally. I don't expect everyone to want to spend two hours a day in the gym. I understand that I am one of the few who really enjoys that, right? But I just, I just got so angry at that attitude because if that had been reversed, and it had been an overweight person or someone, and they had said something like, who spent two hours a day, you know, like that would not have been put in the book at all. And there would have been a huge uproar. So yeah, I feel like that was a major, major faux pas that author did. And it disgusted me so much that I'm like, you're darn right, I'm gonna leave you a one star review and this is why, and I will never read your books again because you cannot take something that is important to someone. You don't know what is important to someone. It is unfair and untrue to categorize every single person who spends time in the gym as a self-absorbed douchebag. Obviously those people exist, right? We all know them, but that's not, that's not everyone. And to categorize everyone into that statement just pissed me the F off and I was like, I was done. So. Clearly I didn't take Justin's advice <laughs> because here I am talking about it on the internet because I'm just so freaking angry about it, right? I don't know, man. Like I can understand, this is, this is something that I love about books and also something that I hate about books is the ability that it has to affect you so deeply and so personally be because of how I feel about the gym to me. The gym is not about what it does to my body. It is, it is a little bit, okay? Like I'd be lying if it wasn't, but it is... 80% of what it does to my mind, how it makes me feel, how it keeps me, 
healthy in my mind, right? Like I struggle with depression, I've talked about that a lot. One of the only things that I have found that helps me is lifting weights, seriously. So, I don't feel like I need to defend that. I'm just saying that while there are a large amount of douchebags who do spend two hours at the gym over two hours at the gym, and they are douchey for that, that is not the whole experience, right? My son is, he just turned 19 yesterday. He is both a physique athlete, he's competed in bodybuilding competitions, and he's a strength athlete. He is dedicated to the gym. And it is so far beyond what it does to his appearance for him that when I hear any kind of talk about this, especially when it talks about a man like that, and they're assuming that it's just something that you should have disdain for, it just makes me so mad because I see the dedication that he has. I see the time he spends learning, the time he spends training, the time he spends resting, the time he spends eating, you know, so he can reach his goals. It just makes me so angry. So while I recognize that this isn't gonna be for everyone, it is for some people and it's not okay to just label it as that. So yeah, that is why I, this is a never read author for me. I don't wanna touch anything she's written ever again. I'm just still so angry about it. So yeah, sorry, hope you enjoyed my rant. <laughs> So much for trying to be a, a good book reader. <laughs> I couldn't help it, guys. I'm sorry. Just and don't be upset with me for breaking the rules, okay? Anyway, anyway, let's move along. Today's tea is turmeric something. Turmeric gold. Which I'm going to drink because turmeric is super good for inflammation and all that stuff. But I ain't going to like it, so. Wow, yeah, that tastes like a, a whole lot of turmeric. <laughs> Look at, it's like, it's so yellow. Look, let me show you. Woo wee. That is some yellow. It's actually not bad, to be honest. It's not, it's not bad. It's, a, it's another one of those, it's not bad, it's not great. It's, it's health. When people think of health drinks, tastes like this, that's what I think. Okay, I'm so sorry, this clip was so long. <sighs> Love you as a friend, see you later, bye. Hi, hello, I'm back. I was gonna, this long is gonna be long. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. This is my story. You can watch it or you don't have to, but I like talking to you guys, so here we go. So I have had, like I've talked about this a little bit, whoa. I've had some chronic health issues this year and I am a strength athlete. I've always, well, not always, but for the last almost six years, I have really prided myself on my strength and my athletic performance, and I've always been proud of how I've been able to endure pain and push through it, and I feel like as a strength athlete, that's some, well, it's any athlete, but this is my experience, like you really have to be comfortable pushing through pain and learning the difference between pain that's gonna actually harm you and the pain in the moment of just pushing through that rep. And so this year has been hard in that I've, really had some struggles with my chronic illness like honestly a lot like i never thought i would be in this situation at all and it has been really a humbling experience to force myself to rest and to force myself to ease back on training and it's been a head game and you know i'm talking about this because i talked about the in the book before where it really criticized people who were at the gym and and the whole reason I'm telling you this story is because to a lot of people, not everyone, but to me, the gym is like sanity. The gym is my escape. Like I have a lot of my identity wrapped up in myself as an athlete. And I know that that's probably not healthy and I'm working through that, but it goes so much further than what I look like. It goes so much further than like, that's just like the teensiest, tiniest, like that's not even, that is just like a benefit of it, right? That's a benefit of the training. The point of being an athlete is the process and what it does to you inside and how it teaches you things about yourself and how it teaches you to overcome things that are really hard. And I feel like that's why I was so passionate about that. That's why that bothered me so much is because it's not about looking good. It's not about looking good for Instagram. It's not about looking good in a swimsuit. It is about what is the gym building in me? What is it building in my soul? How is that building me as a person? And. That's all, I'm just super passionate about it. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't even, I can't even handle 
that comment in that book because it just felt like such a complete attack and a write-off of something that has meant more to me than just about any other, any other material thing, anything else about me. The gym is what made me who I am. And I don't care if people think that that makes me selfish or if it makes me conceited. It doesn't. I don't care what they think. It's who it built me to be. Okay, time to keep working out. last week in this strength block. <sighs> this is, this didn't used to be heavy, but it's heavy now. So I did three sets of eight, 165 pounds. Ugh. It actually felt good, but I'm tired now. <laughs> I have two more sets to go. That was my first set, but I just finished filming two videos in here for my, you know, off the cuff garage gym chats. One is for books I'm anticipating for the next year. And another one is what's on my Kindle Unlimited right now. So I'm really excited about those. They are super fun. That's all. I have no reading update, just life. Good evening, my friends. I am going to close out this vlog. It's still actually early, early-ish. It's like six o'clock. I can't talk. It's like six o'clock at night and I'm just finishing up making dinner for my family and I need to go wash my hair while the rice cooks. And so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna take my makeup off and then, you know, I don't know why I'm telling you all this. This, today's vlog was not much book updates, but a whole lot of, you learned a lot about me. So I'm not sure how interested you are in that. Hopefully you're at least a little bit interested because you're here. <laughs> but anyway, I have been reading some more of this, still super loving it. <sighs> Nothing really new to report on that. I, I'm not going to say I'm going to finish it tonight, but I would really like to finish it tonight. But then again, I might not because me and my son, we may end up just binging the rest of the Lord of the Rings movies for the 50 millionth time, which sounds like a really good time to me. So I don't know. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you for listening to my rambling, passionate rant about uh, that one line in a book that really just set me off. Um, if you happen to make it this far through the vlog, you can leave me a bunny emoji. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.